Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that brings forth its fruit in season. Its leaf does not wither, and in everything he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice. He made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the peoples of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He doesn't deal with us according to our iniquities. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. The wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. You have put your throne in the heavens, and your kingdom rules over all. Oh, bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts. All these ministers who do his will, bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained access into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, we rejoice in our sufferings. Knowing the suffering works patience, and patience works a provenness, and a provenness works hope. And hope does not put us to shame because the love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, for a good man, one might dare to die. Scarcely one die for a righteous man. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who walk according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, and those who walk according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. The mind that is set on the flesh is death, and the mind that is set on the spirit is life and peace. 
For the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God really dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, though your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the one, the Spirit, who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the Spirit that dwells in you. So brothers, we are debtors, but not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. He has not given us a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. He has given us the spirit of sonship by which we cry, Abba, Father, when we do that. The Spirit is bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if we suffer with Him, in order that we might be glorified with Him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth no that the whole creation has been groaning together like pains of childbirth and not the creation only. But we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, even we also groan, waiting our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. In that hope, we were saved. And who hopes for what he sees? But if you hope for what you do not see, you wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness because we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. For we know all things work together for good, for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son in order that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom He predestined, He called. And those whom He called, He justified. And those whom He justified, He glorified. What are we going to say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how shall he not freely with him give us all things? Who's going to bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who's going to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, who was raised from the dead. Yes, who is at the right hand of God interceding for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or about your body, what you shall put on. Consider the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. 
Are you not of much more value than the birds? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. They don't toil or spin. Yet I tell you, Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So don't be anxious saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? All the Gentiles seek these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Seek his kingdom first and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be anxious for itself. Mountains, but have not love. I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and deliver my body to be burned and do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices together with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As for prophecy, it will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For now we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, we see in a mirror, dimly. Then, face to face. Now I know in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Now abide faith, hope, in love, these three, the greatest of these is love, amen.